Hello, and thank you for joining me for another uh, lesson here in Sage X3. In today's lecture, we're going to be taking a look at how to generate um, labels uh, for your items uh, coming out of your manufacturing process. Um, it's a very common application for many clients that when they either go to release the work orders to the floor, they have a packet of labels that they want the production personnel to apply to the goods that are produced. Or in X3, you also have the option to defer the printing process of the labels until after the products have been produced. So we're going to take a look at both of those strategies within the system. Okay, so the first thing that I want us to take a look at is the two commonly used um, labels, re crystal reports within the system that are used with manufacturing. So if we come under our development option, let's go to script dictionary, then over here to reports. So the first um, label report in the system um, that we'll take a look at is this ETIQ prod, which is the manufacturing labels. So this would commonly be the report that you would utilize if your approach is that you want to generate the labels at the time that the work order is released. Okay, so an important um, note on here is, um, you know, many companies, you want to come in um, and set this default destination field. So what this will serve to do is to basically default in the printer that you want to direct the labels to um, when they're being generated, as opposed to having to manually specify the printer direct or printer location. All right, so that's the first label. The second label is this ETI Q01, this demonstration label. Now, this is the label that you would generally um, reference if you were going to print out the labels after the production tracking process has already been performed in the system. So you already have the respective inventory brought into stock you have the um, lot and location information. This uh, ETI Q01 label will present all that additional information um, on the label report. Okay. And just like with the other report, you can also set your default destination, printer destination here. Okay. So that's the first part to it. Secondly, let's take a look at the setup on our product master file as it relates to labeling. So if we come under our common data, let's go down to products, then to products. Now over here on our units of measure tab, okay, we have this label format field here. So what you can do here is if you specify um, in this field either the ETIQ01 or the ETIQ prod on your manufactured item, whenever you go to invoke a label print in the system, X3 will refer back to this respective product and see if there's a default label specified in this field. And if so, it'll go ahead and reference that um, label for you automatically versus you having to manually specify it. Okay. Now we should also note down here in the pack unit section, um, you also have a label format down in this block. So if you have different labels uh, that you want to be affixed to the product depending upon if you're producing, in this case, drums of the product, or if you're producing pallets of the product, maybe the form and you know the size of the label is a little bit different. You can actually specify your label format here based upon whatever unit of measure you're specifying for your production. 
vocab. All right, so next, let's go ahead and take a look at printing a label from our work order. So under our manufacturing, we're going to come down to planning, then to work order. All right, so here is a work order that I just generated. And over here in my right hand panel, I can come over to my report section, then come down to this option here for labels. All right, so this directs me over to my print labels function. So in this case here, I'm saying, yes, I uh, want to print a label. Here's my work order number being referenced. And I'm printing out, in this case, 48 labels, one for each drum that's being produced. And as you can see here under my label format, it defaulted in to what I had specified on the item file. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and update this to the ETIQ prod because that's the typical one that will print out when we're printing the labels from the work order. And in this case, I'm just going to pull it up to my previewer here. So I'll go ahead and do a print over here. Okay, so here are the manufacturing labels. All right, so pretty basic. It has your product ID. It also has a barcode of that item ID, a description of the product, um, how many units of the product have been produced, in what unit of measure, as well as the work order number that the good has been produced upon. Okay, so that there is your standard manufacturing label. Okay. So that's how you generate a label from a work order. Now, to that end, another thing that I want to point out to you real quick is the um, setup on the associated entry transaction of the work order. So if I close out of here, let me come under my setup menu, under manufacturing, then over here under entry transactions, I'm going to come to work orders. All right, so over here on the documents tab of the work order entry transaction, this is where we go to specify, you know, what reports that we want to have printed out, uh, you know, from the work order process here. So in this case, I have a labeling section and I have this labeling set to manual, meaning that I'm at liberty to print out a label, but I basically manually have to go about and print out that label after the work order has been created. Now, alternatively, if I have this set to automatic here, what that would mean is um, upon creation of the work order, um, X3 would go ahead and automatically prompt me um, to go ahead and print out the labels. Okay, I wouldn't have to manually invoke the label printing process. Okay. So that um, can be another handy feature, you know, if your, you know, business process is that you want to print out the labels um, at the time of work order generation. Okay. So next, well, while we're over here at the entry transactions, um, next we're going to take a look at how to print out a label from after you perform the production tracking process against the work order. Okay, so the work order has been completed by your production personnel. Now we're ready to go into the X3 system to declare what was being produced. Then at that point in time, print out the label. Okay, so just like we saw on the work order entry transaction, if I come under my production tracking entry transaction, okay, I'm going to use the all transaction here. Um, over here on the receipt parameters tab, I have this printing section here. So here, 
I can go ahead and set my printing here to labels. Then I'm also going to put a check mark in this numbers number of copies box here. So that will basically enable me to specify how many labels I wish to print out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and validate the screen. So now that the screen's been validated, I'm going to close out of here and go back, go over to my production tracking. So under my manufacturing, I'm going to go to production tracking, then to production tracking. Do our new button. Specify our work order. And in this case, I'm only going to do my production reporting step to declare what was made. So over here on my manufacturing tab, I'll click in there. And in this case, let's say we maybe didn't make our total playing quantity, say we only made 47 drums here. So that's what we achieved on the job. Okay, got all my expiration information. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my create. Okay, so now you can see that based upon my entry transaction setup, I was automatically prompted to print out the production label here. Okay, so this is a label off my production declaration step. I'm going to go ahead and have this set to yes, I want to print out a label. Here's my producible quantity, and here's my, my that demonstration label, okay, which would be the typical label report that you'd want to use when you're printing out the label from this point in the production process. Go ahead and do my print. Okay, so again on this label report, we can see that it's got a little bit more information than just what your standard manufacturing label did. Okay, so it has the, again, it has the product, um, the description, it's got the production tracking, uh, number. Now down here you have the location in which the product is um, put. You have the lot number associated with the product. You have a barcode label here that uh, you know has information relative to the um, you know work order and location, or excuse me, the lot number and the location. You got the QC status of the good, when the good was produced how many units were produced on the job, as well as what the respective um, date of expiration of this product is. Okay, so that's an example of a stock label here that you can invoke from the production tracking. Okay, close that up. Now while we're still here on the production tracking, if I wanted to manually invoke the label prints from here. Over here under my options menu, I have manufacturing labels and stock labels here. So the manufacturing label, um, I could invoke this option if I wanted to go back and print out my ETIQ prod label. And then I have the stock labels here if I wanted to produce um, that ETIQ01 label that we just took a look at here. So depending upon which of these two options I cho choose, it's either going to reference back to my work order document, okay, or if I choose this option for stock labels, it'll refer to my production tracking document, okay. So you basically have some reprint options there. All right, so one more thing that I'd like to show you um, as it relates to the printing of uh, production labels is um, the print labels function. So if I come under my stock option here, then go down to labeling, 
I'm going to come to this option here for print stock labels. Where this function can be useful is if you don't want to go through the process of having to print out a label um, you know, after each and every work order has been produced or at each uh, production tracking record has been created, but rather, for instance, you just want to generate all your work orders, then at the end of that process, just print out all the labels in batch. This print uh, labels function can be utilized to that end. Okay, so for example here, I'm going to come in and say, okay, for this production site, for all my work orders that are generated, and I'm going to put in a range of work order numbers here. And I'm also going to do it, say, for a particular product that I want to label. And I can come over here and do my search. Okay, so that'll go ahead and pull up a range of uh, work orders here. So in this case, let's just say I want to print out the labels for, say, like the first three. So I'm going to come over here, click on my action button, set this to no, and that'll flip the print setting for all of these to no. Then just here on the first three, I'm going to go ahead and flip those to yes. I have so 260 labels for this job, 64 and another 260. Then say here on my label format, let's say I want to print out the manufacturing label as opposed to the stock label. I'll go ahead and update that field there. Click on my action button, do my update column, and that will serve to update all my subsequent uh, rows that are flagged to be printed. Okay. So then at this point, I can just come over and click on my print button. And that should serve to generate the manufacturing labels for all those work orders. Okay. And there they are. Alrighty. So those are the basics uh, behind printing labels for manufacturing within X3. Um, I hope this lesson was of help to you. If so, I'd ask you to please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to inbox me.